I'm Jeff Fritz with Soundstage.com, and I'm joined today by Costa Kulisakis, the director of the Moon Training Program with Sim Audio from Canada. Costa, how are you today? I'm fine, Jeff. Thank you. How about yourself? I'm doing terrific. Really, really, really good. Uh, well, listen, I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about Sim Audio, of course, and I was I was recently perusing the Sim Audio website and you know, I was really struck by, by one main thing, and that is the, the breadth of your product line these days. And it seemed to me that, you know, between uh, integrated amplifiers that are still very high performing and, you know, the massive monoblock uh, power amplifiers, you, a consumer can really assemble a SIM audio uh, component system uh, at, at, at pretty wide ranging price points. And I wanted to ask you, first of all, to take us through your version of what a SIM audio uh, good system or really good system and better and best, what, what would those three systems look like com comprising SIM audio components? Uh, thank you, Jeff. It is true that we do have a, a rather broad product range the Moon brand has always been made up of a large number of different products over the years. And uh, it's made up in, uh, in terms of uh, price range and in product category as well. Uh, today, the Moon brand includes amplifiers, pre-amplifiers, integrated amplifiers, uh, DACs, streaming DACs, phono stages, um, standalone streamers, uh, all-in-one music player uh, that pretty much rounds it out. And uh, yes, there's quite a lot of models within each product category. Uh, it, it certainly helps clarify it for, uh, for interested customers if we kind of put a good, better, best um, scale to it all. Uh, what we consider to be good within the Moon brand range would be our entry level more than anything else, which is our ACE all-in-one music player. Uh, alternately, the ACE all-in-one music player could be substituted with, for example, a 240i integrated amplifier, mated with, for example, a 260DT compact disc transport. The reason why I say this is because our entry level integrated amplifier, the 240i, and our all-in-one music player, the Ace, actually contain the exact same amplifier inside. So the overall okay. quality is the same. It's a feature difference between the two products. So the entry level would be what I would consider to be our good. Moving up the line, we actually jump up a few models. Uh, better is what I would consider the 390 network player preamplifier, mated with our 330A um, power amplifier. <clears throat> now these two components put together uh, form a very complete music system, just add speakers basically and connect it to your network, very much like the ACE is an all-in-one one-box solution. The 330A power amplifier and the 390 made, made it together are what I call a little bit humorously, an all-in-two music system in that <laughs> it's two chassis that give you pretty much everything you'll ever want and even more than what the entry level ace gives you however with 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 a considerably higher level of performance with respect to sound quality you also get more power there are additional features like hdmi switching capability for example uh everything about it is beefed up the quality of the dax the quality of the amplifier um, the streaming portion is the same. We make one streaming platform and that's what we use in all of our models that incorporate streaming inside of them. Uh, however, the overall quality varies because of the rest of the product itself. Um, there is a threefold increase in price between an ACE versus, for example, a 330A and a 390, but you do get a substantially higher level of performance. When we jump up from there, we move to our more expensive range of products. In other words, 600 level, 700 level, 800 level. What we know, what we previously used to refer to as evolution. We don't use that name anymore. Just like in the smaller models, we don't use the word, the nomenclature uh, Neo anymore because it gets a little bit daunting and a little bit confusing with all the different names of our products and all of that. So 
Best, I would jump up, not to our absolute best, because I believe a good, better, best scenario must be something that is attainable, financially attainable by most customers. So as much as I would like to say our best are the 888 monoblock amplifiers and an 850p preamplifier, they are out of financial reach of the vast majority of people. So within the real world, what I would consider best would be, for example, our 780D version 2 streaming DAC, made it with our 740p uh, line preamp and our 860a version 2 two channel power amp now this stack this trio retails for substantially more than a 330a and a 390 but it also gives you that much more in performance you don't get much more in the way of features you break down the components into more boxes um more of a purist approach of course but you get quite an increase in sound quality with respect to musicality, transparency, accuracy, and all of that. And you get that massive build quality that our flagship products are known to have. So that would be what I would call our best. Well, a couple of observations. First, as a reviewer, I appreciate you guys simplifying the, the naming nomenclature of your models. Uh, you know, when, when I look at the website now, it, it really makes a lot of sense in terms of the hierarchy of the products and then the second observation is it's really it's really quite something when you think about it that you can have a sim audio system in the four figures in the five figures and then if you do so choose and you have that type of capital uh the six figures it's it's quite a wide range of product availability and then as you said the, the build quality and the sound quality just goes up uh, you know, as you go up in price. Yeah, you know, the the, the, the massive triple eights are for us a labor of love. Um, we make them because we want to show the world exactly what we are capable of engineering and the performance scope that we're uh, that we can achieve. But we know full well that triple eights, which retail for one hundred and twenty thousand dollars U.S. a pair, are not something that we will get very regular orders for we right. sell very few pairs a year and that's fine you know those few fortunate that are that have the means to afford a pair will be rewarded as for the rest well there is the uh the notion or the concept of trickle down and as an example uh the new 860a version 2 power amplifier is the first amplifier that does have that does employ trickle down technology from the 888s okay so you can get a lot of that performance for a fraction of the price again it's not to say the triple eights aren't worth it in fact what's worth it or not is really a, a, a personal uh gauged personally for some people a, a minor increase in performance which tr might translate to a big in increase in price is every bit worth it for them while for other people the laws of diminishing returns take over at a much lower price point so it's it's you know, we make something for everyone, and uh, although the Moon brand is focused on high performance and, for the most part, you know, high price to go with the high performance, we try to embody as much of that as possible into our more entry-level products. So the DNA is rather common throughout the product line. So, you know, focusing in, you know, not on the whole product line, but focusing in on, um, you know, one or two components, what have you been most excited to sell recently? What's What's selling well for you? What what really gets you going when customers ask questions about a particular product? What what product is is hot right now? Well, what I've noticed in the last few months, particularly, uh, you know, with all that's going on and, and more people um, being restricted to living at home and therefore spending more money at home to improve the quality of their lives at home, one of the things they do is improve their music systems. And one of the uh, the best-selling products that we've uh, we've noticed lately, it's it's been a rather hot seller from the beginning. But I've noticed in the last few months, um, I'd say that the sales have gone up again disproportionately. Uh, are the 330A power amp native with the 390? Uh, basically, from the good, better, best scenario uh, earlier, the better solution. Uh, two boxes, compact, very good looking. Again, because it's only two boxes, you do not have a spaghetti of wires dangling all over the place. 
So from a, from a from the perspective of visual appeal, it's very attractive. Um, <clears throat> they run cool. They could be tucked away somewhere in a tight space if you wish. We always recommend, of course, good ventilation. I don't mean seriously enclose them, but they could be tucked away in a, in a, in a remarkably tight space and they'll work very well. Um, and as I said earlier, feature rich and performance wise, a significant step above what most people would tend to be coming from, which is to say maybe a home theater receiver or a, a more mass market uh, music system that they may have had for many, many years, a more entry level audiophile approach. Moving to the 338, 390 is both making your system more compact and more sophisticated and higher performance at the same time. It's, it's been, I would say, our hottest seller in the last few months. Okay. Well, and, and as we said at the outset, your, your product line is pretty complete, but what would you, uh, what would you say this, the, the future of SimAudio looks like? I don't, I don't know if you have any breaking news you can share with us, but what, what are you guys working on? What can we expect in the next you know, six months to a year from SimAudio? Well, as, as I'm sure you've, uh, you've seen by now, Jeff, this year we, our company has turned 40 years. So yes. we are celebrating our 40th anniversary. And we did uh, just, in fact, just last week, make a global announcement about our 40th anniversary product. Uh, that's brand new from the, from the sense of product. Uh, essentially, it is jazzed up from an aesthetic perspective versions of our 680D streaming DAC and our 600i version 2 integrated amplifier in a beautiful uh, what's called millisim red, which is like a vintage red color, much like a red wine and rose gold. Now those products are a limited edition, uh, series. It's not a reflection of what we want to do in the long term. It's a milestone product to celebrate our 40th anniversary. So that's new, but what we're looking for down the road is increased research and development in, uh, in streaming. Uh, we want to incorporate our streaming solution and future generations of it into more and more of our product line. Uh, we find more and more people, not just necessarily the younger generation that has embraced a tablet or a mobile phone, but even a more mature generation are getting into it because once you understand just a few basic concepts and can operate uh, an app that is intuitive, it's both a lot of fun and very powerful. And yeah. we find that all generations are kind of getting into streaming. So we're getting more and more into that. On the other end of the scale, or from the opposite extreme, I should say, uh, we now have a fairly complete range of phono preamps. And as you can probably tell behind me, I, I have a turntable myself. I have digital and I have analog. And I play both in equal amounts. I absolutely love vinyl. We have, we have great phono preamp solutions. Uh, but phono is something that we have no intention of abandoning. It's there. It's there to stay. Uh, we've invested a lot in, in our phono preamps. We don't have any plans to make any changes anytime soon, but it's something that we will continue to offer because phono, if there's one format that kind of hails back to our roots, you know, we're 40 years old. In 1980, phonograph was the high fidelity format. You know, compact disc had, was barely in its infancy stages back then. So when you wanted the best of the best, you bought a high-end vinyl-based phonograph system. Uh, so phono and streaming, those are the two that we will continue to concentrate on. Perhaps a little bit of a greater emphasis on the streaming because technologically it evolves much more rapidly than phono would. But those are the two where we will always develop further. And as for amplifiers... Um, we will have some nice things to new things to say. I can't really say more than that. It's really more in, in the medium to long term at this point. It's still amplification, of course. Um, but amplifiers are the root or the beginnings of what we offered. Our first products were amplifiers. And we will always specialize and offer high performance amplifiers. That's not going to change. Okay. Well, thank you for the inside look at at the sim audio product line it's really it's really fascinating and i'll be anxious to see what you guys come up with in the future but as of right now you know there, there are some great choices within the sim audio product line 
for, for just about any serious audio file. Uh, Costa, the last question that I have for you is, what has been your favorite recent listening experience? I know you, you mentioned uh, before we went on camera that you're, you're in your listening room. Uh, perhaps it's there or some, something at your factory, but what's really caught your ear lately? Um, when it comes to a listening experience, oddly enough, the one that, that comes to mind, um, believe it or not, does not even involve our product. Uh, my inner my belief is that um, an intimate listening experience is not just about sound quality per se it's about um, the message and the music being conveyed to the listener and um, that means that the music itself at least for me has to be something that I would generally recognize and I would generally be very fond of uh, and I do recall uh, one particular instance in fact it was at the uh, Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, the last one in Denver, which was last year. And I visited one of the exhibitors that was using, in fact, in this case, they were using our product, but there's been other cases where this has not been with, uh, with our product. And um, they were playing a version of, I believe it was a Dire Straits tune they were playing. I don't remember which one. But it was one that I don't listen to. In fact, I remember it was Sultans of Swing from Dire Straits. Okay. And I've heard that song countless times. I'm sorry about that. Somebody else trying to Skype me. I just, um, I've heard that song countless times. And um, this time, however, when I heard it, maybe it was the feeling, the, the, the beat generated by the low frequencies, the bass tune. Uh, the baseline, I should say, or maybe it was the spectral balance, but there was something that just instantly spoke to me. I, I can't convey it into words perfectly other than to say I felt like the music was speaking to me. Now, that particular recording is a very good recording. It's not by any stretch an outstanding recording, but just the way it sounded on that system, it drew me in. My message here to everyone is that, you know, to enjoy your music doesn't mean you only have to listen to high quality recordings. You know, a, a music system is designed to convey a musical message. And regardless of how that recording is made, if the music system is accurate, it should propagate that message. If you have a, a deep understanding of the music and if you connect with that particular music that you're playing, which is also why when I do demos, I like to play music that people would generally be familiar with, not just um, very, um, sometimes it might be eccentric or very uh, unknown, strange music that might be incredibly well recorded, but nobody can really relate to. Uh, so in my case, uh, that was one experience that I'll never forget. Well, I think we've all, all of us in the audiophile community, we can certainly relate to uh, to that experience that you just shared. We, we, we all have those, and, and many times that's what hooks hooks you originally to, uh, to, to, to jump into the audiophile world and, and, uh, and, and better your system. It's, it's always in search of those listening experiences uh, that we're after. Well, Costa, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate the update on Sim Audio, and uh, I hope to hear from you soon. And, you know, we'll, we'll have to do this again when you have a, um, maybe a new product announcement you can share with us. I look forward to it, Jeff. Thank you for the opportunity, and it was great to see you again as well. Talk to you soon. You too. Thank you. Take care.